Hello there, welcome back to the Swiss campaign in the Great War mod, Abridged, where last time the land war was going fine, but we started getting bombed and bombed into submission, losing many of our factories. I tried using some magic to invent anti-aircraft guns, in the hopes that building these would change the situation a bit. Well here we are later, we've got some guns set up, and I suppose it's doing something, but not all that much. We're still being bombed, and our small air force is only able to turn away a few of the enemy's blimps. We very occasionally actually shoot one down as well. I think our plane's stats are too low to overcome the defense of a blimp, so we can't reliably destroy them. But we occasionally damage them, and they don't bomb us as a result. That's something, I guess. But the situation is still deteriorating quite a bit. You can see we have many factories in the queue to be repaired. My construction has to stop for this so we can put more factories towards building the other factories to have more factories for later. With this one exception, I'm going to put the factories now to work making more anti-aircraft guns in the hopes that this will pay off. I think in the long run, it doesn't really pay off. It doesn't make an enormous difference, I think. We do see the anti-aircraft guns get one kill later on. Maybe sometimes they're contributing to the damage as well that turns the bombers away. So it didn't make a decisive change. So as me right for cheating, I guess I really thought that might help, but it didn't really help that much in the end. Now there's another land offensive going on. This time though, we're only fighting in it a bit because only the bottom left of my position is actually on the front line. Thanks to our allies having pushed forward to inferior positions, I'm not going to touch those inferior positions. Our allies can die down there if they want, and if they like, they can fall back to our good positions and be invincible, but they don't like. There is actually a river line down there in Italy, so that's an okay position to defend. The stats are still looking good. We've got a hundred times the enemy's stats there, so as long as they don't break through our bit, we'll be okay. Also, our generals are getting to really high ranks, having won so many battles over the years in this great war. It's really dragging on. We're already past the end of actual World War I, and not much has happened. Looks like we actually occupy part of Italy, which was a nice discovery. Eventually, we'll be able to pull in a bunch of their factories and manpower to help us out. In fact, a little bit of those things will already be available to us, but later it will become more substantial. So that's nice, a reason for our allies not to get killed. A look at the scores now. We're up to 45,000 casualties. I think that's quite a lot more than we saw in the last part, where it was at 20 something thousand. I don't really know, but I think we're taking casualties to the bombing. I feel like the bombing doesn't reduce your manpower, but maybe when they bomb your airfields, because your airbases have manpower at them to support your planes, maybe you do lose some troops to that bombing. You lose troops to close air support, and maybe some of that is happening as well during these land offensives. Overall, I'm not quite sure how we managed to lose so many troops recently, but I suppose the bombing could be something to do with it. As for the enemy's losses, well, we haven't inflicted that much more damage on them just due to not fighting very much, but we've still inflicted millions of casualties overall. The ratio is good, but it's only like half as good as it was last time. Well, the repair of our factories is coming along. We're gradually ramping up the number of civilian factories we have operational, and that will speed this process up. You can see the list is actually starting to empty out. We've only got a few more damaged fortifications to deal with, with the construction repair thing going on in the background, the national focus. Everything's getting repaired constantly all the time, so that's speeding things up as well. And once we have all of our civilian factories repaired, as we do right now, we can get those military factories repaired and get more planes out in the sky. And we're skipping ahead now to a couple of months later when I'm actually starting another air wing. We've already gone through like almost two years in this part of the episode because really nothing has happened. It feels like these things are happening one after the other. No, the war is just eventless. This happened over a very long time period. There's an issue though, the enemy did deploy some fighters to our region. If they contest air superiority, we're in big trouble. Luckily, they stop contesting it for whatever reason, so that's absolutely great. We're slowly getting more and more fighters out there. And that's going to turn away more and more of the bombers, which will allow us to get back into the game with our repairs, get more anti-aircraft out as we're doing there, and just sort of end the air superiority crisis at least a little bit, and at least for a while. Here are the fruits of those labors. We've got through our repairs for the most part, and we're now just finishing off a few upgrades. We can actually get back to 
fortifying the ground even more. There are way more fortifications we can make. I mentioned in the first part, it takes ages to entrench for some reason. We could easily entrench another 10 years and just keep building up Switzerland, so we'll do that if we have the time. And as our number of fighters in the air goes up, I think this persuades the AI to put less bombers in the theater because they now start to have far fewer bombers attacking us but they switch over before our eyes to attacking with fighters instead. They've got quite a few fighters to spare. This is a fight that's going to go less well for us because fighting the bombers is all well and good. We never lose fighters fighting the blimps. But against enemy fighters, this could be an issue. Our production is very low, so if we lose, say, a couple of fighters per week, that's about breaking even. We can't expand our air force anymore, so we need to be quite careful here. However, we also can't allow the enemy to have air superiority because they'll just send the bombers back. So at least with this aerial battle, it's keeping our ground stuff intact. We still have our factories operational. One thing we can try to do to trade efficiently with the enemy is upgrade our fighters using air experience. So all of our early fighter fours will be better than the basic one, although they also take longer to manufacture because you have to restart your efficiency build. Later on though, we've got most of our factories working on these better fighters. We're still massively hamstrung by the fact that we don't have access to rubber anywhere in the trade network. None of our allies have any to spare. And most directions, well, it's just enemy nations because the Entente controls most of the world. That means we can't produce planes very well, whereas the enemy can, of course, and they're going to have far more factories working for their side especially if the US and such sends over their air forces over here. So that's a risk for us. Well, the numbers are stable. We haven't lost many more troops in the odd bit of fighting we've been involved in and not much more bombing seems to have done damage either. We're now into 1921. This war is dragging on. And for the most part, it's still happening right around where it started. Although our side has gained a tiny bit of territory at the cost of something like 8 million casualties across the theatre. On both sides, virtually everybody who was deployed is dead. Both sides have lost like more than 75% of their total manpower. It's looking like a war of dregs at this stage as the two sides frantically try to reproduce to get more soldiers. We're just going to sit here and monitor the air situation. It's not going that poorly for us because the enemy haven't deployed loads of fighters here. We're able to roughly match them and we have a sort of home field advantage, I think. Our guys are going to be in range of the air theatre more than their guys might be. Also, one thing that really helps us out is the fact that aerial combat in this era sucks. You might note that while there are hundreds of fighters on both sides, we're not losing them very much, like both sides might lose a couple every day now and again. And that's because the two sides never meet in the air, we both have terrible aerial detection stats. So we're just flying around and occasionally we happen to fight each other. For the most part, the two sides don't know where the other one's planes are. That's good for us, but really it's just delaying the inevitable. The number of enemy fighters is creeping up over time, and while ours is as well, they can creep up faster than us if they want to. It's still really a gamble on whether the enemy will just be sufficiently distracted by something else to not just sweep in and take aerial superiority. One thing I have going for me is that I have tons of air experience. That means I can invent this better plane. So we're now going to have a really good version of the early Fighter V. We might have the best planes in the world. I don't know how we got so much air experience. Our guys really enjoyed trying to shoot down the blimps and failing. They learned a lot. So our new plane might outclass the enemy, but the stack differential between a good plane and a bad plane isn't that large. So this isn't going to allow us to trade really well or anything like that. All we can do is wait and see what the trade is, I suppose. Here we are with the two forces flying at each other, very rarely actually meeting and occasionally someone on both sides gets shot down. The thing is, if we lose a couple of fighters in a day, that's an issue because we can't necessarily put them back that quickly, so the enemy don't have to do too much to overwhelm us. And what they essentially do is increase the number of fighters in the theatre, also add the bombers back in, and now we're in a form of trouble. Because while we're maintaining some air superiority, the enemy can obviously outproduce us, as mentioned many times, so this could finally be the reckoning. It took them a while to really get around to this, 
but they're starting to put more planes in the theatre, which could allow them to win. I think part of the reason might just be that the rest of the war doesn't have that much going on, and more powers in the distance will have been researching fighters and gradually getting into this air war stuff, so the Entente allies will show up. We're now back to being bombed into oblivion, plus the enemy have loads of fighters to actually protect those bombers, so we can't scare them away as easily. We keep losing air superiority, which makes our ground combat go a bit worse as well. I think they may be able to do some close air support if they want. We're fighting a little bit on the ground, but not really, of course. We just need to somehow get loads of fighters. I was checking there to see if I could make a better fighter, but not really. Progressing to later on, there are even more enemy fighters. Well, that's just going to keep happening at this stage. Whereas our fighter count is gradually going down because we are not producing them fast enough to replace our losses in battle. And we're also not successfully turning away enough of the bombers to not be back in this situation where everything's getting blown up all the time. Which can impact the air war in general as airports and air production factories get hit. Well, what can we do about that really? Looks like our casualties are mounting up. I'm sure we must somehow be able to take casualties from aerial engagements, because we're barely fighting in the actual war, and where we are fighting on one or two tiles, it's with our really high level defences that previously barely gave us any casualties, well maybe those defences are destroyed by now. Whatever the case, I think things are only going to get worse from here. Our side in the war has no rubber, so we're never going to be able to win the air war, and the air war is going to get more and more important over time. Essentially, they'll be able to slowly destroy all of our fortifications, and we can't build them back because they're destroying them too fast and destroying our civilian factories. Alongside the mounting casualties, wherever they're actually coming from, we still don't really know, we are going to run out of people soon enough by the looks of things. I say soon, all these cuts are massive time skips. We're now in 1924, World War I is lasting a while. Here's some good news though, it's fascism time. I decided to change one of my advisors to start spreading fascism and the military is becoming fascistic, that's handy. Because while I failed to create an authoritarian coup, I may be able to create a fascist coup just to change things up in here, so that's what I'm going for with that. I don't think it's actually going to help in any particular way, although maybe some of the fascist traits give you more people to recruit or something like that, so there may be some strategic logic to it. I'm just kind of doing this in the background because I wanted to stop being democratic. Let's throw that out the window and worship God Emperor Devon like we're supposed to be doing the whole time. So that's ongoing, as is the air war. We've now completely lost air superiority, we have zero air superiority, meaning the enemy are all over the place. Whenever our planes take off, they just get shot down. We're shooting down some of the enemy planes and blimps along the way. But of course, that doesn't matter at this stage in the industrial war. So we're going to be ground into the dust over time, I presume. It's taking a long time, as mentioned, but there's no coming back from this unless the Entente breaks up or something, which I don't think is possible. Here's a little look at the war. It's not much of a world war, this World War I. It's pretty much just all of the world versus Germany, me, and Austria-Hungary. There's some stuff going on down there in Austria-Hungary with the Ottoman Empire, I think. Not quite sure. But the Western Front still going strong into 1925. This World War I has been much more static than the real one. No signs of ending soon. The two sides keep attacking each other, taking enormous casualties. Pretty much everybody must be dead in the world, there can't be much manpower left in any of the countries involved in this fighting. Well, will it ever end? It seems not, because the war can't end if it's just going to stalemate because of the rules of the game, I think. And now, we're going to start progressing into the next phase of this campaign. As you can see, I was looking down the tech tree and thinking, maybe we could do something if we had jet fighters. The issue was, if I allow the enemy to just destroy all of my stuff from the air, this no gameplay challenge run will be completed, because there'll be no gameplay left, I won't be able to make anything, I'm certainly not going to move my troops, and we'd just end up stuck waiting for something to happen, and whatever could happen would probably be bad for us. Well, whatever the case, the legitimate gameplay, to the extent that there was some, ends here, because it's cheating time, this browsing of the tech tree inspired me. I realized there are two tech trees I can cheat myself into having 
that might actually help. We can get all of the dispersed industry. This not only reduces the damage from bombing, but allows you to have more factories in the same territory as before, so that will increase our production. So we can cheat our way to having those. And the other thing you saw me just browsing earlier was jet fighters. My idea was that maybe we could contest air superiority with a small number of fighters if the fighters had higher stats. The stat difference isn't that big between the various futuristic fighters you can get compared to what we have now. And we might struggle to actually produce these difficult to make jet fighters. But I thought let's cheat our way to having them anyway. Combined with that and the industry, maybe we can hold on in a more convincing fashion. This is barely going to change what actually happens in the campaign because it's essentially going to be nothing either way. Well, that's just the way I like it. But now the aliens have come down and gifted us ideas like putting our factories underground or something in the mountains. And they've told us about jet engines. So with the backing of the aliens proving that we are the Swiss master race in our new fascist regime, maybe we can do something or do nothing more successfully. We're going to find out next time.